Hey, how's it going guys? I hope this video finds you well, as always. Uh, in today's video, we are going to talk about meiosis and sexual reproduction. In other words, we are going to talk about where do babies come from, okay? Uh, now, this is the objective for this specific uh, PowerPoint. It is that the students will be able to analyze the importance of my meiosis to sexual reproduction. Later on, we want to do the second one, which is to compare and contrast mitosis and meiosis so we're going to see what the differences are between mitosis and meiosis okay please make sure that you have an essential question on your paper and if you want to write this into an essential question it's very very simple you can just make one of your own according to this objective or if you want to make it simpler you can just say what is and then just continue from there the importance of meiosis to sexual reproduction, okay? Now there's some things about meiosis that you need to understand, you need to keep in mind, so just make sure that you pay close attention to this video. The first thing is that we're going to learn the difference between diploid and haploid, okay? Now the term ploid, okay, this is uh, stands for number of chromosomes. If you wanna be more specific, it is the number of uh, centromeres. So when you look at a chromosome, and it is in this, X form that we have learned about, uh, it has in the middle something that we call the centromere, okay? Centromere. Now, um, ploidy means, or ploid means the number of centromeres um, and according to however many chromosomes you have. So, uh, humans, we normally have uh, diploid cells, which means that we have two N. That N stands for number of chromosomes of course now uh, it, when the n in humans is 23 chromosomes we are going to be deployed because we're going to have a total of 46 chromosomes meaning 46 total centromeres okay it might sound a little confusing but just keep in mind that humans are deployed uh all of our body cells okay and then we're going to call these somatic cells all of the body cells that we have are going to be Deploy. Please make sure that you write at least this term down because this is really, really important. Okay, and especially this one right here as well. So somatic cells are body cells like uh, nerve cells, muscle cells, bone marrow cells. I don't know. You name it. Any cell that is not a reproductive cell in your body is going to be a deployed cell, which means that it, it is labeled as two n, meaning a total of forty six chromosomes. Now, on the other hand, a haploid cell, well, half right here, this stands for basically half of that, so half the number of chromosomes, which is just N. And what that means is that instead of being 46 total chromosomes, this type of cells are going to have 23 chromosomes. So make sure that you have that written down. Haploid cells only have 23 chromosomes in humans, half the number. Uh, another thing that is important to mention is that with these cells, so we're going to call them gamete cells, okay? And gametes basically are reproductive cells in humans, and these are the sperm and the egg cells. Now, keep in mind, we're not the only species that reproduce sexually, so, um, you know, some plants also reproduce sexually, so some things like, for example, pollen, okay? Pollen is another example of uh, cells that are gametes. And they are also haploid because they have half the number of chromosomes. Okay? Now, mitosis. We learned previously that mitosis has, um, basically in humans, we start off with uh, a diploid cell, or 2N. Well, remember, diploid 2N. You're going to end up with two daughter cells that are also diploid because you start with the same thing as you end. You start with 46 chromosomes in here, uh, and you're going to end with 46 chromosomes in each of these cells, okay? That's really important for you to remember. That's for mitosis, though. Now, when it comes to meiosis, on the other hand, it's gonna be different. We wanna see what that is. Now, mitosis, you have one parent cell making two daughter cells that are identical to the parent. Remember, we're trying to make identical cells here. There is no genetic variation, meaning there's nothing different between the DNA of this parent cell 
and the DNA of these two daughter cells. The DNA is exactly identical, or it should be exactly identical. So we say there's no genetic variation. Again, that is for mitosis. Um, now we're going to learn a little bit about meiosis, and here's where I tell you a little bit more about gametes. Okay, so basically meiosis is important for the creation of gamete cells, which are also called reproductive cells, example, egg, sperm, uh, and many other different types of cells in other organisms. But this is mostly important for sexual reproduction. Okay, gamete cells are used for sexual reproduction. Um, think about meiosis, which makes it different from mitosis. Meiosis starts off diploid, so we're going to have a cell that is diploid, and these cells, I can give you the name of these cells, are actually called germ cells, okay? These are germ cells that are designed in your body to make gamete cells, okay? And these are going to be gametes here. So germ cells start off diploid, meaning you start off with 46 total chromosomes, right? And eventually... You are what your your cells what they're going to do is that they're going to divide and they're going to have 23 chromosomes each on this side. But it's not going to stop there. What it's going to do is that it's also going to divide each of these cells, and each of them are going to end up again with 23 chromosomes each. Okay? Again, what happened here? You started off with 46, you started diploid. You ended up with 23 chromosomes in each daughter cell that is haploid, half the number of what you start with. Okay? So, uh, steps of meiosis, it occurs in two separate um, steps, or basically the cells divide twice. There's meiosis 1, and then there is meiosis 2. So, think about mitosis, very similar to that. You have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, then you have cytokinesis. Um, but the cells are going to be doing this twice instead of just one time. Okay, this is going to result in the formation of four haploid daughter cells from one diploid cell. And that's exactly what I mentioned on the previous um, slide. So you start off here. Notice how there's one, two, three, four total chromosomes in this picture, in this parent cell. You go through meiosis one, then you go through meiosis two. And you end up with four daughter cells that each have half the number of chromosomes. Now, I want you to notice something about the colors here. Notice how this has a little bit of red and um, light blue here. This one has just um, blue. I want you to notice the difference in those chromosomes. And that's something very, very important about meiosis. Meiosis these daughter cells are going to be different from one another. That obviously is going to lead to more genetic variation. So that's due to a process that we call crossing over. Okay, And crossing over only happens during prophase 1. Okay, When the cell is going through the cycle, through uh, that my first uh, step of meiosis, it's going to go through prophase, and during prophase, homologous chromosomes are going to exchange genetic material in the genes. So um, homologous chromosomes are basically similar chromosomes, okay? That's what homologous means, similar chromosomes. Okay, those chromosomes that are similar to one another, like these two right here. They have uh, similar shapes. They're going to cross over and they're going to share some information, okay? The Play Pause video that we have this week actually does a really good job at explaining this process. We're also gonna do some uh, other things that are it's going to better explain this, but just for now, understand that chromosomes that are similar to one another are called homologous chromosomes, and they're going to share information. Basically, you're gonna trade off some information at one specific spot, like there. And What's going to happen is after crossing over, you have a chromosome that has an extra piece from this one, and then this one has that piece there from this chromosome. Again, we're going to call that crossing over. It takes place in more than one location, though. This one is uh, showing you just one location there, 
But keep in mind that this is going to happen in different locations and different genes are going to be traded off. Um, also, all of the chromosomes are going to be doing this. So not just one chromosome is going to be doing that. All 46 chromosomes are going to be doing the same thing. Okay. Uh, this ensures diversity due to new gene combinations. So why is this so important? Because we want to have diversity. Another word for diversity is variation. You ever wonder why um, you look a little bit like your mom and a little bit like your dad? Well, that is because uh, in most cases, there is crossing over and those crossing overs are going to uh, provide variation in uh, the gamete cells. Okay. So again, crossing over only occurs in prophase one. Please make sure that you know that only occurs in prophase one. The cell will go through meiosis two, but then there's no more crossing over. All right. Crossing over only happens during meiosis one right here. And I'm going to show you um, a better picture of that in a second. Okay, here it is actually. Um, right here, you have interface, then you have prophase one, so the, all this meiosis one. Here in prophase one is where the cell is going to go through crossing over. Okay, these chromosomes, those are similar to one another, they're going to share information. And after that, you're going to have the same step, PMAT, and then you're going to have cytokinesis, they're going to separate. Again, they're going to form chromosomes, and then these chromosomes are going to go through prophase 2, but no crossing over here. So no crossover. They're just going to keep going, separate, and eventually you're going to have four different daughter cells. Keep in mind, these are going to be different cells. So why is meiosis so important? You have to remember that the main purpose of meiosis is to ensure that there's going to be generic, uh, genetic variation, okay? This is important for diversity. Due to that crossing over, you're going to have different genes being shared, um, and so you're gonna end up with variation, okay? So I have this little meme here that says, I am half mom and half dad, thanks meiosis. And yeah, make sure that you don't spell that like this baby did, make sure that you spell that with an I right there okay so next thing is understanding that um, a meiosis is important for the process of fertilization so after the cell the, these germ cells uh, go through meiosis and you have uh, gametes these are going to form what we call a zygote so when these cells join together let's say we have a male gamete cell which is a sperm these are going to be haploid um, and a female gamete cell or an egg these join together through the process of fertilization. Once the egg is fertilized, these um, 23 chromosomes from mom and 23 chromosomes from, from dad are going to join together and they're going to form a cycle that is going to have 46 chromosomes. So you have 23 from mom here and 23 from dad there. Okay. Once you have that fertilized egg, we have a cygote. And the cygote is going to be important because once you have that fertilized egg, this um, diploid zygote cell is going to start dividing through mitosis. And uh, one cell obviously is going to become two identical cells. Then those two are going to become four, eight, 16, and eventually it's going to form a blastocyst. And after that, it becomes a fetus that is going to have specialized cells. Um, and eventually, obviously, after 30 something weeks, you're going to end up with uh, a baby, okay? And so that's basically the entire process of meiosis and mitosis on the same picture, okay? What we're gonna do on the, this next slide, guys, is that we're going to compare uh, and contrast mitosis and meiosis. So the way that we're gonna do this is through this Venn diagram. We're going to look at some terms. Some of them are gonna go for only mitosis, some of them will be for both, and then some of them will be for meiosis. And these are the 20 terms that we're going to have. I want you to make sure that you pause the video here and that you write down those terms in the correct spots. We will go over some of these, but make sure that you have um, gone over these terms and that you 
uh, put them on the correct places. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. I hope you found it informative and I will see you on the next one.